Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We give you all the praise, Abba. Thank you for sending us your precious son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. You have given us the blood of King Jesus on the altar of the cross to forever take away our sin. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. And so we come to you asking that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything that we said, did or thought today that was not pleasing in your sight. Continue to wash us in the blood of the Lamb and continue to fill us, Holy Spirit, with your presence, with your anointing from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Here we are right now. Our mouths are open wide. Please fill it. Teach us great and mighty things that we do not know. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, knowing that when you come, you will establish your kingdom on this earth for a thousand years, and we will reign and rule with you. We long for that day. Continue to walk with us, and may we endure until the end so that we will be saved. We love you, and we say hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. And today's teaching started out um, with me doing an, a, a teaching that I probably will get to later on in this video. But um, it kind of changed at the last moment uh, because I saw a video today and I, I shared it with other people. And, you know, I kind of got, you know, some people received it and some people didn't uh, because, you know, people are afraid whenever they see a date and and I told the people you know when I sent it out in you know text messages that this is not about the setting dates it's about watching and praying always okay so that we will be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are about to come on the earth and stand before the son of man and so once I got that blowback today I just thought in my head you know what some people will not believe no matter what you know, some people just won't believe no matter what you tell them. You know, no matter how many warning signs you give, no matter how many um, scriptures you give, no matter uh, how much compassion you show, no matter, you know, how much truth you um, give, some people will not believe no matter what. It's like some people just will not get on the ark no matter what you say. And uh, that's what this teaching has led me to uh, do right now, you know, because um, people, you know, it just amazes me how we are actually living, you know, in the time that God told us would happen in the last days. I mean, it's not a surprise, but, you know, <laughs> It's just like, you know, you it's one thing to read it, uh, but to actually experience the words from the page in your own life, it totally uh, makes it real to you. And, you know, it's just it just amazes me how people just won't believe, you know, no matter what you tell them. And I, it wasn't like I, I, I was telling them anything wrong because I was uh, I shared this video. Um, from uh, Asa. Let me show you this video. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful video. And he, you know, he was just giving us, you know, the signs of the times. He was, he was letting us know. Um, let me go to my history. He was letting us know that, uh, you know, a rundown. This one, urgent warning. Um, rapture on September eleventh, two thousand eighteen. Amazing prophetic signs. Uh, Millions for Christ, Asa Pittman uh, Ministries. Um, he did a wonderful job with this video. And if you haven't seen it yet, I, I would advise you to, to take a look at it um, because he goes uh, step by step, you know, from the last hundred years about all the signs that God has given us, leading us up to uh, the current time period that we're in right now. And, you know, I, I believe people were probably, the people that I sent it to were probably, um, um, caught off guard by the September 11th, 2018. And, you know, automatically people come up with the, that famous quote in the Bible, no man knows the day or the hour. 
and you know they hide behind that all the time and it, it's just you know and I told the people who I sent it to that you know uh, he thoroughly um gives uh evidence but he's not setting a date you know he even goes so far as to tell us if we're still around even after the day of atonement uh that we still continue on and we still have um um 80 years at the maximum okay we still have 10 more years at the maximum according to uh the years of a generation okay but God tells us to watch and pray always. So we're just on high watch right now because this is the season because we're in the 70th year. Okay. And so people, you know, it just, it just hurts my heart. And, you know, you, you, you share truth with them and um, they reject the truth and you care for these people. And so, you know, once, uh, you know, God was ministering to me after, uh, the, the slight rejection from a couple people, he led me to Ezekiel chapter 14. And Ezekiel chapter 14 just says it plainly. Uh, Though Noah, Daniel, and Job um, were in the city, okay, when the judgment comes, they would deliver no one but them uh, their own lives by their own righteousness, okay? So it's like uh, we can't save anybody, you know? We have to, you know, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And, uh, you know, God led me to Ezekiel 14 to, you know, to strengthen me, to encourage me to, you know, to to uh, to make sure that I'm right. OK, because when when the judgment comes, you know, um, we have to be right. You know, we have to be secure in our um, relationship with King Jesus and. He has guaranteed our security by giving us the Holy Spirit, which is our seal unto the day of redemption. But here we see in Ezekiel chapter 14 that God is talking about the four seals. Okay, the four seals that are going to be broken. Well, the whole seven seal scroll is broken on the cloudy day. And he, he goes over the four seals right here and he, and he compares the judgment that comes upon uh, the world, which begins at Jerusalem. Um, he says that though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in the city uh, when those judgments come, only they would be delivered according to their own righteousness, okay? They won't be able to deliver anyone else, okay? Let's read it, uh, Ezekiel 14, verse 12. And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, when a land sins against me by acting faithlessly, and I stretch out my hand against it, and break its supply of bread, and send famine upon it, and cut off from it man and beast, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it. They would deliver but their own lives by their righteousness, declares the Lord God. Okay, so we know that's the third seal when the famine comes. Uh, verse 15, if I cause wild beasts to pass through the land, and they ravage it, and it be made desolate, so that no one may pass through because of the beast, even if these three men were in it, as I live, declares the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters. They alone would be delivered, but the land would be desolate. And that's the first seal. That's the rider on the white horse, the beast. Uh, verse 17. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, let a sword pass through the land, and I cut off from it man and beast, though these three men were in it, as I live, declares the Lord God, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they alone would be delivered. That's the second seal, the rider on the red horse with the great sword. And then verse 19, or if I send a pestilence into the land and pour out my wrath upon it with blood to cut off from it man and beast, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, declares the Lord God, they would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would deliver but their own lives by their righteousness. And that's the fourth seal, the rider on the pale horse, which is death. Okay, and um, verse 21, For thus saith the Lord God, How much more when I send upon Jerusalem my four disastrous acts of judgment, sword, famine, wild beast, and pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast. But behold, some survivors will be left in it, sons and daughters who will be brought out, 
Behold, when they come out to you and you see their ways and their deeds, you will be consoled for the disaster that I have brought upon Jerusalem, for all that I have brought upon it. They will console you when you see their ways and their deeds, and you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, declares the Lord God. Okay, so um, in context, this is uh, the judgment of the end times when it begins, okay, when the, when the four horses are released, when the four winds are released, okay, on the cloudy day, and uh, great destruction comes to Jerusalem, and uh, extends throughout the whole world, and uh, many people will die on that day, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, the slain of the Lord will lay upon the ground, they will not be buried or lamented, but they shall be as dumb upon the face of the land, okay, but God says that there's going to be survivors, okay, there's going to be survivors who survive the cloudy day, uh, but those who survive the cloudy day, their trouble is just beginning, okay, because then um, the beast, okay, the man of sin, the man of lawlessness uh, will be revealed, and he will uh, appear as the Messiah, okay, and he will enforce the covenant, he will confirm the covenant with many, and once that covenant is confirmed, um, the seven-year countdown begins, okay, uh, but on the cloudy day, when this all begins, great destruction comes, and God says, if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were alive when the time comes, they would deliver no one, not even their son or daughter, okay? Not even their son or daughter would be delivered, okay? But they would only be delivered by their own righteousness, okay? And we know that our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ, okay? That's why we must be born again, okay? And, and that's what God was, you know, consoling me, uh, comforting me with, you know, knowing that uh, my salvation is secure, and, and I can't save anyone. You know, we, we, we want to save the world. You know, we want to point people to Jesus. We want people to understand. We want people to get it, but some people just are not going to get it no matter what, it's like this, it's like this picture, these people on the outside of the ark when the flood came, okay? These people waited and waited and waited and waited, and look what they're saying. We need a little more time to think about it, okay? That's what they thought, okay? Until, the, until that first raindrop dropped, well, then it was over, okay? Once that first raindrop hit their head, well, it was sayonara. It was sayonara for everyone on the outside of the ark, and you know, it's going to be the same way in our days, as we just read in Ezekiel chapter 14, okay? No one is going to be able to deliver anyone. Only ourselves will be able to be delivered if we are born again, because it's the Holy Spirit in us that will deliver us from the wrath to come, okay? We have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And, and that's the thing, because sometimes, you know, you just shake your head. You just shake your head. You share, you share videos with people. You know, I know people who are listening to this teaching, you know, I'm pretty sure that you, you go out there and you share uh, YouTube videos. You share scriptures with other people. You share your testimony with people and, you know, people who you love. Okay, not just, not complete strangers or your neighbor, you know, who you don't really know, but people in your own family you know, and you share your heart with them, you share the truth with them, and uh, they still won't believe, they, they're, they're like this picture, I need a little bit more time to think about it, okay, they're like that picture, I need a little bit more time to think about it, um, where's it at, I, we need a little bit more time to think about it, that's what they say, and you just shake your head, you know, I, I send out this, this teaching to people, and, you know, oh, well, you're setting dates, and, you know, uh, uh, you're deceived, and, uh, you know, just the whole gamut, you know how it goes, but, you know, it's just like, I'm trying to tell you uh, um, through the servants of God, you know, not even my own teachings, you know, that other people are seeing uh, the same things, okay, and uh, we do these things, we, 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 we tell people about the signs of the times, because that's what we're commanded to do, we're watchmen, God says uh, we have to declare what we see, okay? That's what love is all about. When you love someone, you tell them the truth, okay? You're not just going to tell someone if their house is on fire. You're not going to uh, uh, tell them uh, that they're okay, okay? If their house is on fire, you're going to tell them, hey, you need some water, 
Okay, you need you need a a fire truck. Come on, you you need you need uh the bomb of Gilead. Okay, your house is on fire, and your house is built on shaky sand. Okay, yeah, you 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 need you you need some uh uh you need the blood. Okay, to put this fire out. Okay, cause it's only the blood. Okay. The water of the word, which is Jesus Christ, that can put out this flame, okay? Uh, and if you don't put it out, you know, uh, not only will uh, uh, you die once, but you will die twice. Okay, that's the message, and that's the truth, okay? And yes, the truth hurts, but uh, the truth is what sets us free. Hallelujah, okay? Okay, people are... They want tickling ear messages. They want to, you know, hear that everything is going to be peaches and cream, uh, rose, uh, rose uh, blossoms and cherries, uh, chocolate chip cookie dough and rocky road every every day. They want their ice cream and their cake and uh, they want their banana split all in the same day and, and much more the next day. OK, let us eat, drink and be merry, they say, for tomorrow we die. OK, it's just. Let us live for the moment. And it's like, no, my friends, there, there's going to come an end. Okay, th th this world is not right. This is not what God intended. Okay, this is not going to be um, what's going to continue on for eternity. Okay, there's coming an end to all of this wickedness. And the end is fast approaching according to the signs of the times. OK, and God said that we would be aware of the times and seasons in First Thessalonians, chapter five. We would be aware of the signs and, and seasons uh, because we're children of light. And therefore, because we are children of light, the day when he comes, we're going to be expecting him. OK, because we know that he's coming. We know that he's about to appear. We, we know that he's on the way. We know because. We're watching and praying always, and the Holy Spirit is telling us, confirming with us, okay, through other servants, through the Word, uh, through um, everything that we see around us, okay? Knowing uh, the times that we are living, uh, we know what we have to do, just like the sons of Issachar knew long ago. They understood uh, the times that they were in, and they knew what Israel had to do. Okay, and likewise, the remnant, the remnant according to the election of grace, those who are on their watchtowers day and night, you and me and many others like us, we know what's coming. And God says, uh, we're not going to be caught off guard. We're going to be like Noah, Daniel, and Job. And because we're like Noah, Daniel, and Job, when it comes, we will be delivered. We won't be able to deliver our sons or daughters, we can't take anyone else with us because everyone has to stand before God according to their own um, confession of Jesus Christ, according to their own um, knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, okay? According to who they say Jesus Christ is, no one can stand in our place when we stand before him. Mom can't do it for us. Dad can't do it for us. Um, if you have a son or a daughter, they can't do it for you. Grandma and grandpa, they can't do it for you. We have to stand before him, okay? And according to how we lived our life, according to what we said about Jesus, according to if we've been born again, that's the only way that we're going to be delivered, okay? We came in this world alone. We're going to leave this world alone, okay? But... We're not alone if we're born again, because when we leave this world, we're going to be caught up as one body. Hallelujah. We're going to be caught up into the Father's house as a corporate entity, a corporate body of believers, one in Messiah. And uh, the body will meet the head on the cloudy day, and we will be taken into the presence of God. We will be ushered into the presence of the Father because no one comes unto the Father except through the Son. And on the cloudy day, the Son will take us to the Father. Hallelujah. Okay, but it's going to be an individual thing. 
just like uh, uh, the parable uh, tells us, just like God illustrated it. Uh, on that day, one will be in the bed, two will be in the bed, one will be taken, the other one left. Okay. Uh, two people will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken. The other one left. Okay? It's 50-50, my friends. <laughs> that, that's the odds. God, he holds all the cards. He has the advantage. Okay? Okay? It's the house advantage, and the house is God. Okay? <laughs> he, he holds all the cards. Hallelujah. He has all the cards. Okay? And he's already told us uh, the odds, hallelujah. The odds are in his favor, okay? And they never fall out of his favor. That's why we must be in him, hallelujah. We must be in him, rooted and grounded in him, because in him we win. In him the odds are we win, hallelujah, because he's already told us that we won when we are in him, okay? But if you want to roll the dice, <laughs> if you want to gamble with your soul, <laughs> if you need a little bit more time to think about it, okay, if you want to be like uh, those people who are on the outside of the ark, okay, uh, just like it was in the days of Noah, if you want to be like that, if you want to roll the dice, Woo! If if you want to gamble with God, okay, <laughs> you got free will to do it. You got free will. Hallelujah. He, he, he'll never uh he'll never force you. Okay, uh, but he will call your bluff. Okay, because you're bluffing big time. <laughs> and God, he will call your bluff. Hallelujah. Because he knows the cards that you have even before he deals them to you. <laughs> he is the everlasting God. Okay, but if you think you know it all, if you need more time to think about it, if you want to try to call God, <laughs> if you want to try to raise his hand, <laughs> if you if you want to say all in, <laughs> hey, the choice is yours. Hallelujah. The choice belongs to you. You see, but uh, when you gamble with God, okay. Uh, it's a hundred percent guarantee that you will roll snake eyes. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you gamble with God, you ain't going to hit no seven. Okay. You ain't going to hit no seven. Okay. You going to roll snake eyes. Okay. Uh, uh, because when you gamble with your soul, okay, if, if you want to take God up, and you and you need more time to think about it, okay? And you and you want to gamble, okay? Well, you're going to be like um, Lot's sons-in-law, okay? Uh, on the day when the angels came uh, to Sodom and told Lot, tell everyone who you have in this city that we have to get out because um, we cannot do anything until uh, everyone who belongs to you is out of the city. Okay, and then the Bible tells us that Lot lingered, and uh, the angels finally said enough, okay, the destruction has to come, okay, uh, the morning is coming, and uh, the hailstones are about to fall, okay, and so uh, we are going to grab you by the hand, Lot, and take you out of here, because God will never destroy the righteous with the wicked, okay, but when Lot was lingering, he tried to tell his sons-in-law, Come, 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 okay, come. Uh, lot, uh, the, uh, uh, the city of Sodom is about to be destroyed, okay? But what did the Bible tell us about Lot's sons-in-law? The Bible says that Lot's sons-in-law thought that he was joking. He, he, he appeared uh, to them as one who uh, was just playing around. <laughs> and so they didn't take him serious, you see. They didn't heed the warnings. They they said, well, you know, let me just think about it a little bit, Lot. 
Okay, let, 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 let's go to sleep tonight and uh, let me go uh, wake up in the morning and, you know, go about my day and I'll think about what you said. Okay, and let me just think about it a little bit more. Yeah, I think you're just playing around a lot. You, you know, you, you're, you, you've, uh, uh, you may have had a little bit too much wine. Okay, uh, and so when the morning came, <laughs> the Bible tells us that the angels grabbed Lot's hand and Lot grabbed his wife and two daughters and they went out of the city. And when the sun had risen, the Bible tells us that hailstones and coals of fire fell upon Sodom and Gomorrah and all the cities of the plain. And the smoke of the ruin ascended up like the smoke of a furnace. Okay. Those who thought that God was playing were found out. You see, when you play with God, when you uh, try to call God's bluff, when you, when you try to raise God, okay, when you try to uh, shoot some dice with God, he's going to crap you out. <laughs> it's a guarantee. Okay. It's a guarantee. Okay, the only way that we can win is if we are with him. Okay, we have to be in him, just like Noah, Daniel, and Job were in him. Okay, we have to be in Mashiach. We have to be in Jesus. We have to understand what God is doing. And the only way to understand what God is doing is to study to show ourselves approved, to continue to watch and pray always, to look at what uh, fellow watchmen like Asa are telling us, people like Phil Moser and Melvin Thomas and um, Brother Chad and uh, so many, Brother Mark Biltz, you know, uh, uh, so many people, okay, Brother Barry Scarborough, uh, just so many people out here, Brother L.A. Marzuli, Brother um, uh, John, uh, watchman for that great day, uh, Pastor Sandy Armstrong, okay, uh, uh, what's, what's, uh, just so many people, I, I, you know, who are on here, you know, I look at uh, both men and women of God, okay, who are, who are declaring to us what they see, and everything is coming into a perfect alignment, okay, and uh, we see that God is about to step in, and he's about to enter into human history once again, okay, people uh, haven't seen um, uh, him enter into uh, human history for 2,000 years, the last time he entered into human history on a global scale was when he uh, was born of a virgin. And, you know, even that event was localized, okay? He was in Israel. He was in uh, the land of Israel, sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, okay? But uh, as far as maybe, let me use the days of Noah. The last time God entered into judgment on a worldwide scale was over uh, 4,000 years ago, <laughs> Okay, and, uh, you know, God has kept silence for 4,000 years, over 4,000 years since the last time he sent catastrophic judgment upon the whole world. Okay, none of us know the power of his wrath. None of us understand the power of his wrath. Oh, my goodness. Well, oh, my goodness. I shudder at the thought. You see, we underestimate God, you know. I know I, I underestimate his grace and his love, okay, because my goodness, I think of my life and, you know, uh, how many times I should have been snuffed out, you know, just snuffed out. You know, all he has to do is just flinch and I'm done, okay. You don't have to flinch. He just has to think it, okay. He, I don't, he's God. Whatever he does, okay, it, it, it happens, okay, but in his grace and his love, he spared me uh, for such a time as this when, you know, in my mind, I thought I should have been taken out a long time ago the way I was living, even after salvation. But I underestimate the grace of God. I underestimate the love of God. God, forgive me. OK, I underestimate the mercy, the long suffering of our great God and Savior. My goodness, how awesome he is. Woo, what a Savior. 
uh, we have in Jesus. Okay, there's no one like him. But on the flip side, his wrath, oh, uh, we don't understand it. No one does. No one, uh, the last people to understand his wrath, okay, <laughs> the last people to understand his wrath, only eight people live to tell about it. <laughs> only eight people lived to tell about it, okay? <laughs> only eight people lived to tell about it, okay? His wrath, my goodness. Okay, all those people who died in the flood, they're in hell right now. They're in hell at this very moment crying out. They're in hell right now, crying out. Yet they have no rest. They already made their bed. They already went to their lot. Their eternal destiny is forever sealed. No second chance. But for me and you, uh, we have the opportunity to continue to share the good news. And, you know, uh, even though we may get distraught, even though people may reject the message, you know, ultimately our hands are clean because we've shared the message. We've given out the truth and whatever happens and we know what's about to happen, you know, we've done what God has told us to do. Noah, he did what God told him to do. He built the ark. God told him. He's going to send a flood, build the ark so that you, your family, and whoever else will listen to you, if they will, can be saved. No one listened to Noah. Only seven other souls, the souls of his own family. And they were saved. Likewise, in our day, we've pointed people and we're going to continue to point people to the only one who can save us from the wrath to come. And his name is above all names. His name is Jesus Christ. And that don't stop. I'm going to continue by the power of the Holy Spirit living in me to declare the good news of salvation. Okay. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because there's no other option. There is no plan B, okay? You want to get to the Father's house, there's only one way, and that's through the Son of God. There is no other way, okay? You want to take Muhammad, you want to go the way of atheism, you want to go through Hinduism, you want to go through Buddha, okay, well, that way only has one final ending, and that final ending is the lake that burns with fire. That's the option, okay? You want that option? Go ahead. But as my pastor always says, we got to make it hard for a sinner to go to hell. And the way that we make it hard for a sinner to go to hell is to tell them that Jesus Christ is Lord, to tell them that Jesus Christ is coming, to tell them that today, if they will hear his voice, today, if they will harden not their heart, today, if they will say yes, Hallelujah. The ABCs of salvation like Pastor J.D. Farag always gives at the end of his messages is just so amazing, so simple, and so effective. That's all we have to do, the ABCs. The ABCs of salvation, that's it, that's all. Admit that you're a sinner, believe, and confess. That's it. ABC. It doesn't get any easier than that. And so... Uh, praise the Lord. I pray that uh, this teaching was uh, edifying to you. I wanted to just tell you this one thing. You know, I wanted to do this teaching earlier about this, what President Trump said the other day. On Tuesday, President Trump, United States, this is from Jerusalem Post, posted on August 23rd. United States President Donald Trump asserted Tuesday that Israel would need to pay a hefty price in any future peace negotiations because of his decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and move the American embassy to the holy city. The U.S. leader added that the Palestinians would soon get something very good because it's their turn. 
Okay, uh, let me continue reading. This is a quote. As a deal maker, as a bargainer, the president would expect, you would expect, I would expect that the Palestinians would say, okay, so we didn't get that one. Now we want something else. Bolton reason in front of a packed room of journalists. But the fundamental point is that ultimately this is something that the parties are going to have to agree on. Okay, so uh, this is monumental. Okay, look, look this, is, uh, this is monumental. Let me read that right here. Uh, the development comes after President Trump's appointment on the peace process. Senior advisor Jared Kushner and head negotiator Jason Greenblatt last week reinforced Washington's commitment to relaunching talks. This while stressing that neither the Israelis nor the Palestinians will be entirely satisfied with their 18 months in the making proposal. To this end, President Trump has multiple times this year intimated that Israel would need to pay more in any negotiations. Speaking in January alongside Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the U.S. leader stated, you won one point on Jerusalem and you'll give up some other points later. Notably, Israeli Defense Minister Avigador Lieberman previously acknowledged that the government had to be prepared to make concessions following the embassy move, explaining that there is no free lunch. Perhaps then Bolton was merely sugarcoating a self-evident fact that Israel will need to make painful compromises in order to achieve peace. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what, what else can you say? What else can you say? I mean, America, is, they're making their bed hard. This is, this is just, this is disaster. It's disaster. Just disaster. This is disaster. Okay, this is disaster. That's all I can say. God said in First Thessalonians, when they say peace and safety, this is the peace deal. They want to bring safety to the land of Israel. And the peace deal is going to have something in it that was going to benefit the Palestinians. Um, and that's going to be something uh, because it's their turn. Okay. Uh, Donald Trump as the ultimate deal maker, he made his move. Okay. But uh, he didn't do it um, because it was, you know, the right thing to do. He did it because uh, this is what he does as a deal maker. Okay. I remember uh, I saw brother Barry uh, Scarborough's video and he talked uh, about uh, this, uh, this peace deal. And he, he went over the deal making ability of Donald Trump. And that's a real good video. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. But you know, this is what Donald Trump does. Okay. And, uh, and because he, he made the first move, uh, there's going to be some payback because there is no free lunch. Okay. There's going to be payback and that payback, according to what Donald Trump said is a hefty price. The payback is a hefty price. You see, but, uh, when this peace deal is announced, uh, that's, that's it. I mean, this is what, this is, this is it. This is what God said. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. Okay. I had a whole lot more to this that I wasn't going to go over according to everything in the Bible, but you know, uh, I was redirected. Um, and I already shared that with the first 30 minutes. I had to get that out. And so maybe I'll come back with another teaching which goes into in depth about what God says about this, but it's just so much, you know, it's just so much, you know, it's just so much, just, it's just so, so, so much that the Bible talks about, about this day, about this day that comes suddenly, <laughs> uh, this day that comes suddenly in an instant. Okay. Isaiah 29 Oh, it's just, it's just so, just so, uh, so much. Uh, here he talks about what's going to come to Ariel, the city of David. Ariel means lioness of God. It's a, it's another name for uh, Jerusalem. And he's talking about what's going to happen when Jerusalem is judged. But then he also goes on to talk about the people who come against Jerusalem. What's going to happen to the people who come against Jerusalem. And that's what we see here in verse five. The people who are coming against Jerusalem, this is what he says. Moreover, the multitude of your strangers shall be like small dust, and the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as chaff that passeth away. 
Yea, it shall be at an instant suddenly. Okay, so he's talking about the cloudy day. He's talking about all the people who are going to come against Jerusalem. He's talking about, oh, the treachery of the cloudy day. The treacherous dealer has dealt very treacherously. Okay, uh, the well-favored harlot. Oh, my goodness. It's just, oh, Edom. Okay, the brother of Israel. It's all wrapped up into one. No wonder God said, uh, mystery, Babylon the Great. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just so many connections. It's just so many connections with Babylon the Great. And no wonder God named her a mystery because literally all of these ancient kingdoms and, and, and people groups are, are connected and their judgments to Babylon the Great that comes instantly, suddenly. That's the cloudy day when the sudden destruction comes. And look what happens when it comes instantly, suddenly, when God um, comes against all those nations who uh, came against Jerusalem. Okay, the controversy of Zion. Look what happens, verse 6. You shall be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder. Okay, that's the seven thunders. Okay, that's the rapture. Okay, when the seven thunders speak, we're going up. Hallelujah. Uh, that's the cloudy day. Okay, when God comes. Okay, it's the day of clouds, according to Ezekiel chapter 30. Okay, it's the uh, First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, when God comes on the clouds. Okay, uh, God is going to visit with thunder. The seven thunders are going to utter their voice. And those who are ready are caught up. Okay, because it's the trumpet of God at the last trump, the last thunder. And Psalm 29, as everyone in the temple cries, glory. Okay, but that's not all. When God visits, he's also going to come with earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Okay, it's the judgment of Almighty God. God is going to visit. Okay, he's going to visit. Okay, and uh, the Hebrew um, word for visit in its form is also the same form that we find in uh, Gog and Magog. Okay, you shall be visited. Okay, the word for visit is pakad, pakad, uh, to attend to, to visit, to muster, to appoint. Okay, so God is going to visit on the cloudy day that comes instantly, suddenly. And uh, we see that in Isaiah 29, verse 6. That's what we just read. He's going to visit with thunder. Okay, but that same Hebrew word in its same exact form he is also used in Ezekiel 38, 8, which is the battle of Gog and Magog. And it's used at the other end of the spectrum when God uh, summons the nations to come. Oh, it, it's just so wonderful. Look at this. This is the prophecy against Gog. Okay, so he's telling Gog to be prepared. Verse 7, be thou prepared and prepare for yourself, you and all your company that are assembled unto you, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days you shall be visited. Okay, so he's, he's preparing the nations to come. He's, he's drawing the nations. Remember, he puts a hook into the jaws of Gog. That's verse 4. And I will turn you back and put hooks into your jaws. And I will bring you forth in all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Okay, so God is drawing the nations. He's telling them to come. Come against the land. He's drawing them to the battle. Okay, verse 8, after many days you shall be visited in the latter years. Right now, the, this, the, this is the time we are in the latter years. You shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste. But it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Okay, so we see it's the double pronged uh, of visitation. Okay, God is putting the hooks into the jaws of Gog and Magog, leading them to come down against the land of Israel, because on, on the opposite end, God is going to visit. Okay, God is going to visit the whole planet when these nations come against Israel. Okay, because 
This is the day of his vengeance, and he's gathering all the nations into the valley of decision, the valley of Jehoshaphat. We see that in um, Joel chapter 3. Okay, Joel chapter 3 tells us uh, that God is, is, is summoning the nations, okay, into the valley of decision, okay, because the nations have divided his land. Uh, Joel chapter 3 verse 1, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That Jehoshaphat means the valley of judgment. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Okay. So we see that. God is doing this because the nations have parted his land. The nations have divided his land. And here we go. The chief nation who's in charge of it all is none other than the United States of America, the same nation who had one solar eclipse cross on August 24, 2017, made one diagonal cross across the land. And seven years later, in the opposite direction, Another diagonal solar eclipse will cross the land to make an X. And uh, that tells us that Babylon the Great is marked for judgment. Okay. As Babylon has done, so shall it be done unto her. Okay. And uh, there was just so much that I wanted to get into with the connections. But, <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it's just so amazing. You know, this is, this is it, my friends. I mean, this is it, you know, this is it. This is what God told us would happen, peace and safety. Uh, when they call for peace and safety, when they divide the land, well, we know what comes next. It comes instantly. It comes suddenly. It comes instantly, suddenly. And though Noah, Daniel, and Job were alive at that time, they would deliver no one but their own lives by their righteousness, declares the Lord. They would deliver neither son nor daughter. Okay. <laughs> when it happens instantly, when it happens suddenly, you have to be ready. We have to be ready. We must be born again. Okay, because when it happens, he's coming like a thief. Woo-wee! He's coming like a thief in the night. Okay. <laughs> he's going to be riding on his cloud swiftly. And the idols of Egypt will be moved at his presence. Okay. Well, we see that in Isaiah chapter 19. I mean, there's just so many connections when he comes on the cloud. Okay. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rides upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. <laughs> He's coming on his swift cloud. Okay, and look, who has the world's tallest stone structure? Who has the world's tallest obelisk? Okay, the monument that is, has its origination in Egypt. <laughs> it's none other than the United States of America. Okay, there's just, I mean, the sign of the prophet Jonah appeared over America. The prophet Jonah uh, was sent to the ancient uh, uh, city of Nineveh. Okay, and God gave America that American eclipse, the great American solar eclipse, which was the sign of the prophet Jonah. He gave America 40 days, just like he gave the ancient city of Nineveh 40 days. And because America did not repent, okay, because America did not follow the model that Nineveh gave from uh, the king on down to the donkeys. Everyone had to repent in sackcloth and ashes. And God would have stayed. He would have stopped. He would not have sealed up the judgment. But because America did not repent in 40 days, what happened the day after Yom Kippur last year? The greatest mass shooting in U.S. history in Sin City. Okay. <laughs> 
bullets were raining down from a, on top in that hotel on into the harvest festival okay when the harvest comes on the cloudy day when god rides on his swift cloud instead of bullets it's going to be hailstones and coals of fire okay god is going to cast judgment upon the well-favored harlot that is why the great fall of babylon the great will resound around the world okay but uh make no mistake about it you know there's going to be a terrible destruction across the planet okay one fourth of the world is slated for death okay that's over a billion people okay over a, a billion people almost close to two billion people dead at the beginning of the cloudy day okay america only has what 300 400 million maybe let's just be generous and say half half of america's population is is raptured okay and let's say maybe another let, let's just say maybe 600 million people okay or 700 million people around the uh, planet um are raptured okay uh that still leaves seven billion people left behind okay that still leaves 7 billion people left behind. The population of the world is about 7.7 .7 billion people. Let's say 700 million are raptured. Okay. 7 billion people are left behind for the cloudy day. And one fourth of all them are going to die. America is just a drop in the bucket. Okay. That's only what 200 million people left in America. Uh, there still uh, is, is over a billion other people who are going to die, okay, around the world. Gog and Magog for sure, okay, because we know that they're the ones who's going to come against Israel. And God said he's going to destroy Gog and Magog and only leave five, six of the army remaining. He's going to send fire upon Gog and Magog. And he's going to send fire upon those who dwell carelessly in the isles. Okay, we see that here in Ezekiel uh, 39, uh, verse 6. And I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, great destruction is coming on this day. Okay, because it's also, uh, that second horse is also going to ride. Okay, uh, World War Three. okay, uh, the great sword is going to be taken out. Peace is going to be taken from the earth. When people are saying peace and safety, no, peace is taken from the earth. Great destruction comes, okay? The world is going to be cleansed and judged by fire, okay? And it's a terrible destruction that comes on the cloudy day. And those who dwell carelessly on the aisles, that's a, a, another um hint at babylon the great who fulfills so many of these ancient prophecies in a dual fulfillment that's why she's called a mystery okay she could not be understood until we got to the end times okay until we got to the latter years until we see who's the one who's going to start it all who's the one who's going to break the everlasting covenant with the deal of the century who is the one who is in charge of it all? It's none other than the United States of America who brings it all about. The only nation who says that she will never fall. Who says in our heart, I will sit as a lady forever. Okay, look at Isaiah 47, 8. Now, therefore, hear this, you lover of pleasures who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. Let's make America great again, right? <laughs> but look at what God says. These two things shall come to you in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in full measure in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments okay there's just so much to this but it's all going to happen in one day one hour 
America totally destroyed. That's just one nation, but many nations. We just saw how Magog is going to be destroyed. All the kingdoms that are with Magog destroyed. Okay, great destruction across the whole planet. Okay, great destruction across the whole planet. God is coming down on the clouds. Okay, and the whole heavens are going to shake and the whole earth is going to shake. Total devastation. And then from the ashes, the beast will appear and... The great tribulation will begin for those who love Jesus, who are left behind, who will come to faith, the tribulation saints. Uh, Jesus will be um, an accursed word in that time. They're going to blame, just like when Nero blamed the Christians when Rome was set on fire. When Rome was set on fire, Nero needed someone to scapegoat. He scapegoated the Christians. Okay, when the Antichrist appears, when he appears as the Messiah to the Jewish people, okay, the Jews, uh, because they're blinded still, uh, they hate uh, Yeshua, okay, and they're going to say, well, uh, we're, we told you that Yeshua wasn't uh, the Messiah, he's the Messiah, this one who came in his own name, and so, uh, you know, he's going to outlaw uh, the name of Jesus, everyone who worships Jesus, okay, they're, he's going to blame Jesus for the cloudy day. Everyone who loves Jesus in that day, well, you're going to be hunted, hunted down and killed. That's the fifth seal, the martyrs, okay? Uh, but their full number hasn't been reached yet, as we, as we read in Revelation chapter 6, when they're crying out under the altar. God tells them to rest, okay, because there's still a lot more that has to be killed, okay? Uh, but once the tribulation begins, if you love, if you're left behind and you know the truth and you love Jesus, well, you're going to die first. OK, uh, ain't no telling what the enemy is going to say, but, you know, he's going to say everything and do anything to stamp out all the truth. And that begins with killing anyone who talks about the name of Jesus. OK. And for the Jews, they could care less because they're going to have their temple rebuilt and they're deceived until the abomination of desolation occurs midway through the tribulation. And then uh, many of them will flee to the wilderness and be protected from um, the great tribulation for uh, the Jews at that time, okay, and for everyone, uh, because then the mask is off, the devil is revealed, and everyone who does not take the mark of the beast will be killed, simple as that, okay, everybody, okay, because then he's just, he's going to exalt himself above everything, everyone that is called God. Okay, he's going to sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, he's going to demand the whole world to worship him. And everyone who will not worship him will be killed. Simple as that. And even those who take the mark of the beast, he's going to kill. Okay, it, it's, it's, it's terrible. Okay, he's the deceiver. He has no regard for human life. Okay, great wars are going to be fought. The sixth trumpet war is going to be fought. Okay, and this great destruction is going to come during the last half of the tribulation. Okay, and so uh, I pray that this teaching was edifying. I'm going to stop it here, you know, because I keep on going because I, I had a whole lot more in regards to this, um, what Trump said the other day. But, you know, I, I pray that what it, God said through me today was edifying to someone in that we're encouraged, and if there's anyone out there who doesn't know you, Lord Jesus, I pray that they would come to know you. The time is short, the days are evil, and the coming of the Lord is at hand. The fulfillment of every vision is about to be manifested, and if you're not born again, if you're not ready, you're going to be left behind. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it, and there's a good chance that you're going to die if you're left behind right when it begins, and if you die, on the cloudy day, well, you have no second chance because you're going to go to hell. So don't gamble with your soul. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. Say yes to him. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. I need you. I have no one else. I believe that you are uh, who you say you are. I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead, and that you give forgiveness of sins and eternal life to anyone who comes to you. And right now I'm coming to you. Save me from the wrath to come. I love you and I believe in you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's as simple as that. Say it out of your own heart. 
okay? Because God will not despise a broken and a contrite heart, but he will give grace unto the humble. So humble yourself before the sight of a mighty God and he will lift you up. His name is Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love you. Surely he comes quickly. Amen. Amen. And amen.